I've seen a number of my students use the rotation transform to build these diagonal sections, and it's really inconvenient for a number of reasons that I'm going to show you. I think you should be using the skew transform instead, so once I show you all the reasons why not to use the rotation transform, we'll see how to use skew to make this super easy for you. Let's hop into it. Hey there, Webbay. Okay, so you've got these sections here in Webflow, and one thing you might do is take the section and say, you know what, I want a super cool gradient on this thing. So we're gonna just pop in a gradient that starts as, let's have it start red and go to orange. And we want it to be 90 degrees, nothing too fancy. But yep, there's our gradient. Okay, now I want this whole thing to be rotated. So we'd come down here to our 2D transforms and we'll add a rotation of say negative five degrees. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, now this obviously isn't great because we've rotated everything that's nested inside of our diagonal section. So we might wanna fix that by wrapping padding global with another div block and call this rotation correction. And you can see I've already built it in here and this just has a rotation in the opposite direction. So five degrees in this case. So now our content's looking good, but we still have our diagonal section up here with the background peeking out behind it. And you can see over here as well. So you might say, well, this thing should probably be wider than its wrapper. So I'd come up here and make the width 120%. And okay, the right side's looking good, but it's actually extending from the origin, which is the left side over here. So maybe we just offset that mar with some negative margin. So I'd grab diagonal section and say negative 10%, which is half of 20%, right? Okay, great, this is looking good, but now we've introduced horizontal scroll, which is the enemy of responsive design. So let's come to our main wrapper and we'll set overflow hidden and boom. Now we don't have that horizontal scroll anymore but it gets even worse. Now, let's say I wanna add an interaction to the direct child of our diagonal section. So rotation correction. Say I wanted this to like just slide up and fade in or something. So you could go to interactions here and add a scroll into view interaction and we'll do it with slide and we'll do it from the bottom. And if I preview this, we'll see it's sliding in because what's going on with the interaction is it's just setting the trans, it's using the transform property, but it doesn't know about that rotation transform that we've already set. So to fix this, and look, it takes some time, but it gets back. You would actually want to start your own animation, create a new animation, and then you do something like, as one of your initial states, you'd have to set the rotation at that five degrees. So now we've made maintaining this really difficult on ourselves. If we wanted to just change the rotation value of our section, we have to change it on the section itself. We have to change it on the rotation correction, and we'd have to change it in their interaction. So let's remove all this junk. So I'm going to reset this, say done. We'll delete, we'll come out of here, we'll trash can it. And then on rotation correction, let's you know get rid of the transform. And on diagonal section, we'll get rid of the transform as well. And I have it as position relative, but let me reset that. Let me reset the width and let me reset the negative margin. So we're back to where we started. We've got a section, but we wanna rotate it. Now, instead of applying everything to that diagonal section, and using this rotation correction, I'm actually gonna delete rotation correction. And we'll go ahead and add a div block as a sibling to our padding global or as another child of diagonal section. So now diagonal section has two children. And this div block is gonna get a class name of something like um, diagonal background. And diagonal background, now this will be its own element. So let's go ahead and before I do that, We'll take diagonal section and I also wanna reset the image gradient on there. And so diagonal background now, you see it's taking up some space, but let's go ahead and set its position to absolute and set it to full here and cover. So that's 0% distance from every side. And now we've set it to absolute, but we also need to set the parent, in this case diagonal section, back to relative so that it only exists within that container. Now let's add our image and gradient to that. And to that, we're gonna grab the gradient. So we're going from red to orange, 90 degrees. And that's starting to look very similar, but we need to rotate it, right? Guess what? We're not gonna use rotation. We're just gonna use the skew property. This is just something I find that people forget even exists all the time. So we'll set skew Y to negative five degrees and boom, there we have it. This section is looking great. You know, if we wanna adjust our padding, we can do that a little bit too in our padding section medium here if we think it needs a little bit more with the design. Um, anyways, I just wanted to make a video on that because I see a lot of people using uh, rotation 
and making their life a lot more difficult. Now, it's also fun to get really fancy with these sections by adding curves or different jagged edges and that sort of thing. And for that, I would use SVG. And I actually have a video showing how to animate section SVGs. So you should check that out if this video is really helpful for you. And you should also think about hitting that like button and subscribing. Anyways, whatever you decide to do, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.